Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory, where today we're going to take a look at Knock Knock. Knock Knock is the character you can see on screen right now. And as always, I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first part of the video and in the second part of the video. We're going to take a look at the perks, the mutations and everything else you need to know. Now let's get right into it. Um, what this is going to be about is pretty straightforward. Um, it is going to be a melee character, a slugger, meaning we are using two-handed weaponry, even though we're swinging it in one hand if we are using third person here, um, just because we're using power armor, but it's still going to be a two-handed uh, melee weapon. And to be more precise, what we're using here is an instigating swing speed fire axe. Uh, I always love the fire axe in this game. Um, it was quite cool in Fallout New Vegas 2, and that's where the name comes from, Knock Knock. Um, was a unique fire axe you could find there. And despite not being the best one-handed melee weapon, uh, two-handed melee, uh, two melee weapon in this game, I do still think it packs quite a punch, and ultimately when it comes to melee weapons, it's not even making all that much of a difference. Now, there's a few melee weapons up there that are performing relatively similar to each other like there's there's no big differences there um it's more about how s uh, strong you are and so on but on this occasion what the main focus of the build was was to try to create a character that can nearly constantly power attack now it's not like there's a, a lot you need to do in order to make this right but once it works it's quite cool like i do like power attacking a lot, uh, especially since the damage nerfs, you really get a lot of mileage out of it, and if you can basically um, power attack all the time, that gives you a real nice benefit there. Now there's an argument to be made that if we're using power attacks the whole time, uh, why not use a weapon with the extra power attack damage modification, or legendary effect, uh, better said. Now, well. The main reason is I still think that overall, even if you're using power attacks, your DPS is probably higher with a swing speed weapon because, yeah, swing speed also affects how fast you can do power attacks. So, as you can see here, we can do them quite quickly, uh, especially once you get into the to the flow. You can basically do it very quickly, like pretty much comparable to the normal swing speed on a not swing speed enhanced slugger weapon. So as you saw here, it goes relatively smooth and overall you might want to carry a power attack damage version of this weapon for maybe super mutants because as you can see here it's not quite enough to finish them off in one hit um, unless we're hitting the head like on this occasion which now with the new melee update works way better I think like Especially since you're doing the attack from above, it's fairly easy to aim for the head. Now, it doesn't work all the time, but with a lot of practice, I guess you could do it fairly consistently. And overall, the not other nice thing about the swing speed modification is that, well, we can do a nice little follow-up uh, hit, which, if the enemy doesn't go down in one hit, yeah, you can utilize that. Another thing we have to our uh, at our disposal which we're going to utilize here is you do have pain train on this build which should have been enough to kill this mole rat but yeah, on this occasion it didn't work also is there just one mole rat here which is a bit suspicious now there's another one let's see where is it Okay, for some reason the mole rats don't go down as well with the pain train. Usually it does way better damage, but well, anyways. It's just a fun little gimmick I decided to throw into the mix here. You can use it or not. Um, there's never a reason you really want to use it because it's not as powerful, but it can be a lot of fun. Now, another thing that th this build has, simply because we had a few points in... Um, in agility left that we didn't really utilize here I decided to utilize um, the enforcer perk meaning that shotguns have a chance to cripple an enemy's limb which works very well on shotguns and since we're talking about shotguns let's just take those shotgun shells and if we find the scorch piece here 
Yeah, that's a very good solution for a melee build. If you can make up the three uh, perk points, I'd argue even one perk point in agility would probably be enough. It just helps you fighting, uh, especially the, the Scorch Beast. Now let's just take out the shotgun here. Just some hip fire blast should be enough here. Okay, the left wing is already crippled. We do have concentrated fire, not a lot, so we're wasting some shots, but here we go, both limbs are crippled. And ultimately, that means the Scorch Beast has to land. Now, I think it can still go up, but yeah. Anyways, here you can see on um, tankier enemies, that's where the constant power attacks really come of handy. So, when it comes to little mobs like Scorch and so on, you basically don't really need the power attack, it's just nice to have, but especially when it comes to bosses, the power attacks really help you to improve your DPS. Now, a bit more about the build itself. Well, in terms of optics, I really try to go for a heavy fire breather here. Uh, I always like the faction a lot, at least it's lore, I mean, it's not like we're seeing the faction in action or anything, but yeah, this whole build turned out to work quite well in my uh, opinion. It's like a frontliner for the fire breathers with the red X01. Now X01 typically uh, you'd assume this is more of a enclave power armor but to be honest I think in Fallout 76 um, the way power armor is delivered and everything yeah I think lore is quite off the table here like everyone can get whatever he gets his hands on so you're free to use whatever you like, and I think the aesthetics work out quite well. However, you can ultimately go with any other uh, power armor if you like to, obviously. Um, the reason I wanted to have the X01 here is because it has the scorched paint, and I thought that would work quite well with uh, fire breathers. I didn't want to go all red with this, and so I decided to paint the shoulders with scorched, which worked very well. And the helmet I do have is from the Vertigard. Uh, armor, the power armor skin you unlocked during the last season, I think, so yeah, that worked quite well here. Another thing is we can sprint quite long, and we do, oh, we're actually nearly to, uh, close to dying, but yeah. A legendary Gutsy and another ballistic one, that's pretty much a threat to everything. They can tear through your armor pretty easily, but still we managed to survive quite easily here now there's an assault on which shouldn't be a problem since we do have the uh, legendary perk that makes enemy uh, energy attacks recharge our fusion course and give us extra health so assault drones are basically no threat at that point um, I only have rank 2 of it so I think even rank 1 is enough to be honest, like more than rank 1 would probably be necessary to tank the Sheep Squatch Imposter, but that's about it. Uh, other than that, yeah, energy enemies are just redundant at that point. Uh, I also had the red lighting here, which I guess wouldn't be the best lighting in a actual fire situation. You want a bright light, I guess. I'm not a fire uh, fireman or anything, but... I guess red light wouldn't be the best, it just fits the whole aesthetic here, and obviously the Fire Axe works perfectly here. Um, for some reason I never really shown off the Fire Axe before, but it's a lovely weapon, I do like it. And even, as I said, it isn't the, the hardest hitting weapon, uh, the hardest hitting melee weapon, but it feels like it has a, a punch, so it's very satisfying to use for some reason. I can't really tell why that is, but it just seems to be the case. Now, okay, we're just finishing on, off him. Now, there are usually some rats. I don't want them to bother me when I want to fast travel, so we're quickly killing them off. No need to power attack on this occasion. And, yeah. I'm going to fast travel to Huntersville and really hope that it has some spawns. Because I was in Huntersville, like, 45 minutes ago with another character. But... Ever since the update, my respawns seem to be very fucked up, and uh, so enemies seem to not respawn really well. Uh, it's, it's worse in interiors than exteriors, but... Ok, 
okay, I think we have luck here. Um, not sure, I saw one Reddit post about it, but that's it. There's not a lot of talk about it. Uh, in the Reddit post, in one of the comments, I saw that someone suggested it's um, connected to the to the uh, daily ops somehow, that they mess up spawns, but um, I actually didn't do any daily ops before logging in today, so can't really tell. Now, to get a bit more in-depth with the weapon here, like instigating still one of the better effects on, on melee I'd say simply because yeah it's a plain benefit for most situations but on the other hand melee is one of the classes where the instigating effect had one, it biggest hit like depending on a weapon it can be that yeah it does pretty much nothing I had an instigating Deathclaw Gauntlet, which I wanted to use for a stealth uh, unarmed character. And while I was using it, I was quite satisfied with how everything turned out. Uh, however, once I thought about it, I thought like, how much does instigating actually add? And decided to try the exact same build, uh, exact same circumstances and everything with a non-legendary uh, Deathclaw Gauntlet. And surprise, surprise, I did like 20 damage less or something, so yeah, the problem is that instigating only gives you one extra base damage, and the base damage of a melee weapon is the damage it does without any modifications, any damage perks, and most notably with only uh, one strength, which is pretty pathetic in most situations. Now on slugger weapons it works a bit better since they seem to have quite a good punch to them. Um, even on a non-melee character, an instigating effect carries something like probably 50 or 60 extra damage, which is noticeable, uh, especially on mobs. The thing is, it's completely useless on bosses, as it always was, but as you saw earlier, that's when we're utilizing the, uh, the power attacks, which in and of themselves are quite powerful, and these days I feel like, yeah, swing speed or power attack damage are just the most important things you could look at in a melee weapon uh, unless you go bloodied but even then the real damage from from a bloodied build from a bloodied uh, melee build doesn't really come from the bloodied effect itself anymore it's just the fact that unyielding gives you so much uh, extra strength so that's the nice boost you do have but yeah overall I was quite, uh, quite disappointed um, the thing is, I wanted to use something else. Uh, I had an anti-armor power attack version, but I feel like looking back, every single melee character I did for the last half year had anti-armor, which I'm not even s considering to be so great on melee weapons. So yeah, I just wanted to show off something different here. Um, the other thing is, I do have an, a vampire swing speed fire axe, which obviously works very well with this build here, gives you just a bit more tankiness, but on the other hand, I thought like uh, vampires on a melee weapon is very basic as well. Uh, it's basically all that people use that don't use um, bloody. Um, I do have one junkies unarmed build coming up, so I didn't really want to go for a junkies build. And yeah, ultimately I went for this here instigating, simply because the main focus of this build, as I said in the beginning, was just that you can use a lot of power attacks. And yeah, so ultimately the primary effect of the weapon didn't really bother me too much. And still, it it does work kind of well. Now, we consistently screw a little bit with our instigating effect with our, um, sorry, how's it called, uh, pain train perk. But that's just something, while on, in theory you think that happens a lot, you really get used to it quickly. It, doesn't do all that much and you can even time things quite well once you're figuring it out that you can do an attack and do a pain train together uh, if you time everything correctly which leads to a good impact damage so it's a bit hard to get off but it's very satisfying if it happens now I'm not sure if you will see it during the video maybe we did see it already but Ultimately, it doesn't matter. And by the way, even if I said um, 
swing speed, yeah, swing speed gives us this nice little um, follow-up swing. I mostly just do two power attacks in a row anyways, simply because there's not a lot of difference and yeah, it just works out pretty well. We're quite tanky, we can take the hits and overall I gotta say everything went very smoothly. Uh, I really am a big fan of power armor melee characters these, day, uh, these days just seem to work very nicely and do what I think a melee build should do. Like, I'm not necessarily concerned with doing a crazy amount of damage in one hit. Uh, melee for me always was just a character that can go up close and personal and just do some hits. I don't care if I take two or three hits to an enemy uh, or one, one hit him. I want to feel like a melee brute and it worked out quite well. Um, the next melee character, or better to say, unarmed character, will be without power armor, but still quite tanky though. And overall, I gotta say, the m best thing about this build, in my opinion, is just how the aesthetics turned out. But anyways, guys, this was the gameplay part of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we're now going to take a look at the more in-depth uh, in -depth information. So here it is, as I said, instigating swing speed uh, fire axe. Now, one thing I have to say is I did repair this weapon up to 200% condition before we started the video. So as you can see, we lost pretty much half of its condition. However, uh, I seem to not be alone thinking that something's off with the condition bars yet again. Um, not the first time that after a big up uh, update, something went wrong there. Yeah, we're, we gotta see. I guess Bethesda will fix it sooner or later. I can't think that the current condition is supposed to be that way. But anyways, back to the weapon. Uh, anti uh, Instigating swing speed with the spikes attachment just gives you more armor penetration. And I think even a little bit of bleed damage. But anyways, just more damage. Quite nice to have. Not gonna say no. And also the aesthetic works quite well here. In terms of armor, yeah pretty straightforward here the interesting part is the core assembly plan uh, the sorry the core assembly modification on our torso here which improves our um, AP refresh one of the key factors in doing a lot of uh, power attacks obviously um, the rest here quite straightforward we do have calibrated for more carry weight capacity if you manage to carry less though feel free to use the uh, Modifications that increase your strength for a little bit more damage. Not a lot to be honest, but could be no nice. And here we do have the optimized bracers, which reduce the power attack the, uh, cost. So that's another important thing here. I'm not quite sure if both arms are overkill, but there's nothing else we could put on the other arm that would benefit us anyway. So might as well use both arms with optimized. As for the helmet... Uh, no miscellaneous mod here, um, nothing that really fit. Uh, best case scenario, go for the one that imp increases your intelligence for a bit more XP, but I didn't bother on this occasion. Uh, I was right, um, it was the Vertigard paint, by the way, and yeah, ultimately we do have the headlamp, headlamp red tactical modification for the red flashlight, but you saw that during the video. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. In terms of effects, we do have Bird Bones, Carnivore, Grounded, Marsupial, Scaly Skin, Speed Demon, Talons, and Twisted Muscles. Car uh, bird Bones, Strength minus 4, arguably a big hit. Uh, otherwise, we do have um, the... Uh, sorry, how's it called? Am I stupid now? The Class Freak uh, mutation, so this is just a visual bug. Overall, we're just getting minus one strength, which isn't a whole lot. And the extra four agility just give us a little bit more action points. Uh, ultimately, I didn't really choose to do this. I had this um, uh, this mutation from a late, uh, earlier build, and I would go without it. The extra four agility are nice, but not necessary. And even if it's just minus one strength, I'd ultimately go without that debuff if I had to choose now, but it wasn't strong enough of a debuff to remove random mutations for me and regain the ones I lost in the process, so that's why Bird Bones is here. Carnivore is pretty straightforward, I'd say on pretty much every single melee character, Carnivore is a good idea, simply because there's quite a few 
very easy to find meals, um, mud jobs, deathclaw meat, and so on that give you good buffs to your uh, melee damage. So doubling them, very easy, very straightforward. Grounded, pretty easy. We don't use any guns here, let alone uh, energy guns. The only gun we do use is a uh, uh, pump action shotgun. And even then, if that was uh, had reduced uh, damage, wouldn't mind uh, personally, simply because we're just using it to cripple enemies. We're not dealing damage with it. So, yeah, just another 100 energy resistance. Ultimately, not really necessary in a power armor because of um, diminishing returns at the point that we probably have. But it doesn't hurt to have it. Basically, no debuff to us. Marsupial, pretty straightforward. More jump height, more carry weight. What should you say? Skate skin, uh, a bit less AP, but we do have a lot of AP to begin with. So, having a little bit less, and keep in mind, these are... Uh, not the actual debuffs because class 3 didn't, doesn't, doesn't show it here in all actually it's 12.5 uh, less AP which isn't a whole lot and in return we get a good chunk of energy and damage resistance so we take that speed demon while we're not reloading any weapon the simple faster movement speed in every situation is nice enough in my opinion to make it worth now talents doesn't really do anything for us since we're not using unarmed weaponry here, but the only debuff here is minus one agility, which, yeah, we get th four agility from bird bones over there, so ultimately another mutation I wouldn't go for if I just would have created this character from scratch, but the debuff we're getting here is simply not worth randomly uh, removing uh, mutations to the point that I don't have it anymore. Um, and then there's another important one, Twisted Muscles. This is very obvious. We do have less gun accuracy, but we don't really need it, as I said. Uh, we only use our weapon to cripple, uh, sorry, to cripple limbs of enemies. And while we ultimately need a few more shots to do that with the Twisted Muscles uh, debuff, it's not that big of a deal. Yet again, 12.5% less uh, gun accuracy. Now, you can just hip fire, it works quite well, so there's that. But in return, we do get 25% extra melee damage, which is obviously very nice, and especially the chance to cripple is also pretty good, especially if you're going against um, mid tier enemies like Glowing Ghouls or a Sheep Scorch, for example, would be uh, a situation where the crippling is also pretty nice, in addition to our crippling abilities from our shotgun. And yeah. That's it about the uh, mutations, and let's get on to the uh, perks themselves. Now, in strength, we do have rank 1 of Slugger, Expert, and Master Slugger. We didn't go higher on this occasion simply because I wanted to have a few other perks that I otherwise couldn't use, and ultimately the difference between using Slugger at rank 1 or rank 3 isn't all that great anymore. You could argue that basically as long as you have a high strength build, you can use um, uh, melee anyways. The most important uh, pieces here are martial artist and incisor for more armor penetration and swing speed. Those are the main DPS improving perks for a melee build here. Pretty universally even. Um, Slugger just there because three points we had over we could use them and ultimately they give a little bit of a buff but I just wanted to show that you don't even need what I'm doing oftentimes where I just use 9 perk points to get my damage up. It's not that big of a difference. And lastly, we do have Blocker and Pain Train here in Strength. Now, Blocker, pretty obvious, a bit more tankiness when we're going against uh, enemies like Ghouls, Sh Yao Wai are a good example, Death Claws and so on. So Blocker, very good perk for uh, melee builds. And Pain Train, as I said, pretty straightforward. Um, no way necessary, I just like to have fun with it every now and then, especially at the widescreen golf course or something. Yeah, running through the golf course, hitting ghouls in the process, returning the same way, and yeah, with two hits you can kill a 60, level 60 ghoul, so you can definitely reduce the number of them quite easily with Pain Train, and the sound effect is quite satisfying, even though its effect is a bit laggy from time to time, but yeah, use it or don't. If you don't want to use it, just use rank 2 of each slugger perk and you're fine. 
or I'm sure you'll find something else to use here. Perception is at a relatively low one, um, because yeah, we don't really use it. It would obviously be nice to have more perception simply to target enemy limbs easier with our shotgun. However, that situation is just not going to be important enough so we can sacrifice using perk points here. So therefore, I just went with one rank to have the plain ability to target limbs. And even then, I'm not necessarily using it to then shoot the limbs. It's just to check the status of the limbs if they are crippled yet or not. Um, like, see if the limbs are crippled, and if they aren't, just go for manual shots. That tends to work better and gives you a nice feeling as well. So, there's that. In Endurance, we are at 10 here. We do have rank 4 of Life Giver for just some extra health points. We do have rank 3 of Fireproof, pretty straightforward. Uh, we are in Power Armor, so we don't have a dense chest piece. And, yeah, reducing damage from explosions, pretty universally good perk here. Uh, very few situations where it's not useful. And then you can see we have two unused perk points. Plain reason here. Um, I do want to use Party Boy and Cam Fiend in combination here on this build. So, yeah. Only thing I would have done with those two perk points is I would have used higher ranks of Cam Fiend. Meaning that I would have had even longer lasting cams. And as far as I'm aware, alcohol is included as a cam in this situation, so the buff from a uh, whiskey, for example, lasts longer. So I didn't go out of my way to level up two more times just to show you this, because ultimately it wouldn't have made a big difference for you to see. So there's that. Just use rank 3 of Camphine on this situation. Next thing here is we have usually very low charisma. It's very rarely that we have more, and on this occasion we have charisma 10, which is pretty high for my standards so here it is we do have lone wanderer still even though we are a high charisma character i tend to play solo so if you don't want to play solo just use um something else instead um stranger numbers very obvious choice and use well bodyguards would be the best idea in my opinion but i'm sure you find something here or just go lower with, with your charisma um, tenderizer, very straightforward, helps us a lot with bosses. Multiplicative 10% damage are nothing to cough at, so yeah, I wanted to include that. Even though we are one-shotting most mobs, that's pretty much the point. They won't be dead. When fighting mobs, we don't have any need for tenderizer or something. It's really just helping us with, with tougher enemies. But when that's necessary, it really helps us. And lastly, we, we do have the aforementioned Party Boy, which I just talked about uh, when we were in the Endurance Tree. Um, effects of pre-war alcohol are tripled, meaning that a simple whiskey, which you can even craft yourself with fairly easy um, ingredients. I think it's just some corn and... Uh, corn... Is it is it grain? And some boiled water, something like that. It's really not all that uh, hard to come by. And gives you 6 extra strength, which is on paper 6 times 5% extra uh, damage, extra melee damage. So even though it's not a whole lot, it's an easy to maintain buff. Lasts for about 8 minutes or something with the Camp Fiend uh, maxed out. So it's nice to have just a little buff you can use all the time. On to Intelligence, we are low at rank 3 with first aid. I know a lot of people just want more intelligence because they want to grind the scoreboard easily and everything, but I personally don't care all that much. Now I soon have to get into more intelligent characters back again, uh, simply to get more level ups to do my builds, but every now and then I don't really care, I just go down, uh, because you can really use intelligence as a dumpster, it's not all that important in this game. Um, Unless you really just want to grind XP, which I understand, but I don't think it's necessary for everyone. And first aid I simply choose because even though we are quite tanky, um, every now and then we do use Born, uh, a stim pack through Born Survivor. And yeah, if that's the case, the stim pack just heals us completely. And yeah, we basically never have to bother with, um, with using a stim pack ourselves. Um, you saw the situation when I was at the Red Rocket Mega Truck stop. That was 
a situation where you saw that we're not indestructible. Like, multiple gutsies with penetrating rounds, they can be a pest, so there's definitely situations where a good chunk of, uh, uh, of uh, HP are necessary. So, therefore, first aid, not a bad idea, in my opinion. You can just spam, spam Stimpaks, though, and spare those points, use something else, make sure Floria rank 3 or something. Feel free to do whatever you like here. Onto agility, uh, pretty high for a melee character, but on the other hand, a lot of melee characters do have high agility, so yeah. We do have Action Boy here, so you see, combined with Lone Wanderer and our um, torso modification, we do have a lot of AP refresh uh, getting together, so that's why I, uh, our AP comes back so, so fast and we can do a whole lot of power attacks. Then we do a through hiker, simple. Alcohol can weigh you down quite a lot. Um, on average, I'd say one one bottle of alcohol tends to weigh one pound, so that can quickly add up. And with through hiker, you can just use uh, or scrounge up whatever you find. And every now and then, you'll see that you have a new alcohol type that you have gathered ten or so of, and then you can just use that for your quick select menu and go with that for the next hour or so of gameplay so that's how I do it um, otherwise you can just craft a bunch and carry that around easily and also food buffs are available plentiful for melee characters so through hiker not a bad idea you can live without it though feel free to use something else and Forza uh, I did explain it during the gameplay part of the video here we just had some perk points left over ultimately we would have found a use for them but on the other hand, Enforcer, while it's very situational for us, if we use it, it really helps us. So therefore, yeah, we use it here. Just there to cripple limbs. Now you can see here, 30% chance to cripple a limb. That's a bit of an understatement because those 30% um, chance go to every single projectile, which I think is 7 or 8 projectiles. So yeah, if you manage to do a full shot on a limb, it's basically crippled. Rank 1 of Born Survivor, just said it, sometimes it's necessary, rank 1 is more than enough, um, very rarely do enemies penetrate our health bar so hard that uh, we can survive once we're in those 20% uh, and get a uh, stim pack. So yeah, rank 1 is enough here in my opinion. And lastly, we do have rank 5 of Adrenaline, because why not? Extra damage going on, really going into rage mode. Uh, works pretty well in my opinion, and you really feel it during a fight. First few enemies you take down, you may have a, a little bit of a struggle, need to take two or maybe three hits. But as the fight moves on, you can just start one hitting everything. And that's the nice thing about it, I do like it. I don't have to tell you why Adrenaline is good, so rank 5 of it, here we have it. And lastly, we do have Luck with rank 3 of Glass Freak and two, uh, rank 2 of Star's Genes. So ultimately, we could do a, a few uh, perk points here and there to improve our survivability, but I didn't feel like it's necessary. We could give us yet a little bit more damage, but also I felt like we were okay and we have other uh, ways of doing that. So, I went with a very low luck character here, just the plain basics, especially Star Sheen on every pretty, uh, pretty much every single character. And Class Freak, well, what should I say, uh, I said it earlier, reducing debuffs, plain and simple. You could live without it though. And now let's take a look at our legendary perks. We do have Legendary Intelligence, Charisma and Strength, nothing much to talk about here now. Pretty much everyone knows Legendary Charisma in and of itself is a bad idea because it doesn't help you share more perks. So therefore if you plan to play in a, uh, in a group, in a team, don't use it. On the other hand, it's divided by 3 so we do have 9 Charisma without uh, Legendary Charisma so it wouldn't make a difference anyways. And yeah, ultimately, those five perk points are just there to give me a little bit more access to perks. So not, not a lot to talk about. The only difference here, strength, just a bit more damage because it just buffs our overall strength a little bit. 
ultimately I would love to have this at rank 5 but yeah that's it rank 4 sorry then we do have electric absorption I uh, did mention it during the gameplay part of the video when we were fighting the assaultron this is the perk that makes this possible every single power armor user knows it I think I couldn't think of a good reason for any power armor user to not use this perk it's basically very powerful it's one of the best uh, legendary perks that were introduced in my opinion um, simply because it renders basically every single uh, enemy that uses a energy weapon completely useless not even useless they actually help you so yeah and as I saw rank 2 more than enough now Obviously, you can go higher. I didn't. I think on my dedicated power armor character, I do have have it higher than rank two, but in all fairness, doesn't add a whole lot. It's not really necessary. So therefore, yeah, use electric absorption is just great. Collateral damage. Every now and then, when you kill an uh, enemy with your melee weapon, which you pretty much always use to kill enemies, so you have a chance that it explodes. Now, I do like the effect. I love when it happens, feels uh, feels very satisfying, however, it's very inconsistent. Now, if it works correctly, it seems to do a lot of extra damage to surrounding enemies. However, most of the time, or very often at least, I see it proc and I see the effect, but even enemies that stand very, very close take no damage whatsoever. Now, another thing is... This could mess with our instigating effect, but on the other hand, where this happens is mostly during uh, mob fights, ghouls, uh, slower enemies like uh, weaker enemies like Scorch and so on. And yeah, you don't really need the instigating effect in this situation. And on the other hand, while you're not getting the instigating effect, you're getting a, mul a multiplicative 10% uh, damage from Tenderizer. So. It doesn't mess too much with us, and I did want it to include it simply for the fun of it. And lastly, we do have a perk I pretty much never used so far, I think. It's Power Sprinter. Idea is quite simple. Um, since we're using all of our AP to power attack all the time, I wanted to sprint into uh, enemies, damage them a little bit with my uh, Pain Train mutation, uh, Pain Train perk, and then still have enough AP left to instantly start power attacking with, without having to wait for two or three seconds to regain my AP. Obviously only rank 1 won't do a whole lot. I'm not sure if you wanna max out this perk. I, I'm not sure if anyone did to be honest. Uh, it's one of those perks that while it's very cool, ultimately there's just always better choices. It's a very casual perk I guess but on this occasion, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And, well, we were talking so long that it's got night at this point, and, well, very satisfying thumbnail in my opinion. Now, sadly, the red doesn't come off as well as I was hoping for. I had one slightly brighter picture where the red were, was more prominent, but I think the atmosphere on this picture here worked quite well. Anyways, I had a lot of fun with this character. Um, the only problem is I tend to... Yeah, I do love to make melee characters, but I feel even though there's no real good reason for it, talking about ranged characters is a bit more fluent for me. There's a bit more to talk about because ultimately melee is just wacky wacky killy stuff, so it's it's a bit hard for me to, to find the right words to describe why certain melee weapons feel different to others because on paper they're all very similar. Um, ranged weapons have a bit more detail and more depth to them but on the other hand yeah I still enjoy making them and in the near future I have a feeling that there's there are about to come a few melee, uh, melee builds so yeah Keep an eye out for them, the next one will probably be an unarmed build, but after that I'm pretty sure we're going into range territory again. And yeah, have a nice time, see you later guys, bye.